we're going to go over homework on page 342. Uh, question number one, uh, when a 65 kilogram person climbs into a 1,000 kilogram car, the car springs compress vertically by 2.8 centimeters. What will be the frequency of vibration when the car hits a bump? So the first thing we have to do here is, is find the, the spring constant. And the spring constant has nothing to do with the 1,000 kilograms. It only has to do um, with the 65 kilograms. Um, so the force acting, so there's Hooke's law without the minus sign. Uh, the force acting is, is the weight of the person that goes into the car. So if we substitute in, um, you know, 65 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared and divide by that by the amount of, of compression of the spring, which is 2.8 centimeters or 0 0.028, 0 0.028 meters, um, our K value becomes 2.28 times 10 to the 4 newtons per meter. Um, and then, of course, um, the frequency of oscillation for a spring, F equals um, 1 over 2 pi uh, square root K over M. And then, uh, you know, obviously, we're going to substitute this for our uh, K value. And the oscillating spring is going to support the car and the person. So our mass has to be 1,065 kilograms. And if we do that, um, we get a frequency of 0.74 hertz. Question three, if a particle undergoes a simple harmonic motion with amplitude of 0.25 meters, what's the total distance it travels um, in one period? Well, um, you know, again, the, um, the total distance um, is going to be a uh, function of that amplitude. One period would take this spring here that's at the equilibrium spot, um, would take it to up here, which is a distance A. It would drop back to the equilibrium spot, which is another distance A. It would drop down to the lower distance a, and then it would come back up to the um, equilibrium spot. So it would go up A, down A, there's 2A, down A, that's 3A, up A, that's four times the amplitude. So our total distance in that particular situation would be equal to one meter. In question number seven, we can use our frequency equation to uh, figure out the elastic constant. So that gives us another tool, right? So because look at well, where else does K appear, right? It appears uh, in F equals uh, K times X. It also appears in our elastic spring uh, energy equation, um, you know, but but we don't know the energy and we don't know um, the force for for question number seven, and quite frankly, we don't know the x value either. Uh, but we do have information here. So algebraically, if we square everything, we can get f squared um, equals one over four pi squared uh, and k over m. We're looking for k, so four pi squared f squared m is equal to uh, k, um, where you know m is going to be 50 grams, which is 0.05 uh, kilograms. Our frequency is 2.5 hertz. We plug all those things in, and we get a k value equal to uh, 12 newtons per meter. And then for part B, um, basically we just increase the mass on that uh, setup so that we can reuse this idea of frequency equals 1 over 2 pi square root k over m. Um, and we just figured out the k value, right? The k value stays no matter what the mass is. Newtons per meter, 12 newtons per meter. And now we got a new mass of, of 0.25 kilograms. So therefore, uh, the frequency of oscillation becomes 1.1 hertz.
question number eight, we go back to our frequency equation. Um, and, you know, basically what this thing illustrates here is that, um, you know, in, in question number eight, there's two different masses. Well, two different masses will produce two different um, frequencies. The frequency is inversely proportional to the square of the mass. So if we're talking about mass one, uh, the frequency that's associated with that is proportional to one over M1. All right, and what that means then is that F2 is proportional to one over the square root of, of M2. <clears throat> so since they're inversely proportional, if I took a ratio, then the ratio of F1 to F2 would be equal to, you know, in the, you know reverse of the inverse would be equal to the square root of M2 um, over the square root of M1. Because in reality, you know, what, where where'd that come from, right? That came from, you know, up top, I'd have one over the square root of M1, and down below, I'd have one over the square root of, of M2. You know, drop the M1 down, invert, and bring the M2 up, and, and this, is what I, this is what I end up with right here. So, you know, question eight is asking for, um, you know, frequency two, let's just say, right? So if I take F1 and I cross multiply times the square root of M1 divided by the square root of, of M2, I'm going to get um, frequency, frequency two. Um, you know, so if I plug in, um, you know, for, for frequency one, if I, if I plug in, uh, what is it? Uh, so that's gonna be what, three Hertz. Um, and the, the mass associated um, with that is going to be uh, 0.6 kilograms times 0.6 kilograms square rooted uh, divided by uh, the square root of 0.38 kilograms is going to give me my F2, which becomes 3.8 hertz. Now, the other way to do that, you know, you could take F equals 1 over 2 pi square root k over m, um, we know f, uh, you know, f is 3 hertz equals 1 over 2 pi times the square root of k divided by, um, uh, what's that, 0. 0.6 kilograms, 0. 0.6 uh, kilograms. I, I, could, I could find the k value here. Oops, I'm running off the screen here. I could find the k value here. Um, k equals some number, and then I put it back into my frequency equation using the new mass. Um, you know, so so f2 would be one over two pi times whatever number I get from up here, square root k over m, and, and this m would then be 0.38 kilograms, and I would get uh, I'd get the exact same thing if I did that.